Let's look at it. Yeah, let's look at verse 32 and 33. Uh, Kelly, why don't you read verses 32 and 33? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from Let's stop heaven. there for a second. You know, I think there's an implication of that is that they had, had, had given Moses all the credit for all of sure. those great miracles of the Old Testament. And in fact, there was sometimes the talk of the merits of Moses. Well, how many times did they say we have Moses to our exactly. father? Exactly. You know, well, turned... and yet to some Jews, he was considered, the, as I mentioned earlier, the first Messiah, because he did everything that, uh, that 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 their expectations said that he would do. And you see what what Jesus is saying is, hey, Moses was great, but it was my father that did this. Okay, keep reading, Kelly. Thirty-three. Yeah. For the bread of God is He which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. In fact, when He came down. He was born in Beit Lechem, which means house of bread. He is the bread of life. And uh, he's giving them something more than... Moses brought Mo to Moses' credit. Of course, there were many things that would lead to salvation. But it wasn't enough. That's why in his great sermon, he's going to add to all that Moses had given to, to them. That's right. What else they need to really achieve eternal life. So the, and the bread of life, next, eternal life. Yeah, look at that next verse. They still don't get it. You know, after he's taught that profound bread of God that's coming down from heaven, then they say, give us that bread. But you know the implication is real bread. It's yeah. more bread from heaven. It's more miracles. Yeah. It's more uh, filling substance. So we don't go out, have to go out and labor. Yeah. I am that bread of life. That phrase is a descriptive title for Jesus, but he uses it often to introduce metaphors that teach something about his character. Uh, like, uh, I am the bread, I am the living water, I am the light of the world, I am the door, I am the true vine, I am the good shepherd, I am the resurrection and the life. And um, so, so we're saying is. mortal life is more than ethics. If you're a good, honorable, just person, and you provide a good living for a family, or you, you know, get a, have a good life, that's not enough to qualify us to go back into the Father's presence. There has to be a point where we receive the Savior with all our hearts and look to Him for salvation and no other place. There's no other name, there's no other door, there's no other shepherd, there's no other food. He is, in fact, the old tabernacle. Everything they loved about Moses, you walked in the holy place and there was a lampstand and He is the light of the world and there's a table of shoe bread and He said, I am the bread of life and there's an altar of incense and He is the intercession between us and God's presence everything Moses did tried to point to the Savior and now he's here saying and he's doing the same for the, the Passover those elements uh, look forward to Jesus he's using some sacramental imagery now he says I'm the bread of life you eat this just like at the well living water you drink this you, you drink from the well you get thirsty again but you drink the the water of life well you eat the bread of life this is the bread if verse 51 that come down from heaven and the bread that I'll give is my flesh so these, this is sacramental images now. There is and, and it's clearly talking blood. about resurrection yeah, and, that's and what eternal I, life. That's what I meant by more than ethics. You need ordinances. Right. Sure. If all we have are ethics, I, I mean, Jesus was a good person, and if we try and follow his example to be good people, that's still not enough. It requires receiving him, and that means receiving the ordinances that he's given us that well, enables us to have that life. Look at verse 41, too, in, in relationship to what uh, has been, been said here, and, and look at their reaction to, to Jesus' very bold statement about he being the bread of life. Um, they murmured uh, at him because he said, I'm the bread which came down from heaven. Which means they knew what he was exactly. saying. Exactly. Uh, what I'm here to give you is not what you want. You want that filling bread so you don't have to go out and work. You want this... Um, the easy way the, back. The, the, yeah, the easy, easy life. life. Yeah, yeah, you want uh, t temporal redemption. Yeah. I'm bringing spiritual salvation. Now, he's clearly talking about what's coming in an eternal sense at the end of mm. verse 39, the end of verse 40, the end of verse 44, the end of verse 54. Four different times he says, I will raise you up yes. at yeah. the last day. Yeah. Now, I'll just give you some sustenance for today. But isn't it, you know, back to what Ray was saying there of, they're rejecting this notion because they don't like the doctrine, and when they don't like the doctrine, they call into question his background. Yeah. 
isn't this yeah. Joseph and Mary's son? And doesn't he have a dubious background, <laughs> even though they've seen miracle after miracle? Well, and they've got to make a choice here. Um, and that choice is they've, they've got these false expectations of the Messiah. He's clarifying, as Kelly pointed out. I'm, I am, I'm, I'm here uh, to raise you up. I'm here to fill you spiritually. Um, and and they're, they're looking at this and they're murmuring about it because if, if, they, if they go with that, they've got to let this old, these old prior expectations die and, and, and assume some new sets of expectations. Now, at what point do we focus so much on the things of this world that we no longer consider Christ and eternal life of any importance? This is the Messiah standing in front of people, offering them all these incredible blessings like you've mentioned, and they're more interested in the temporal, yeah. mortal sphere. And, and there was another sifting element of his uh, of this doctrine. I, I think this this sermon I call it a sifting sermon because this is really hard doctrine to them, as as we pointed out. Look in verse 44. Uh, we've talked about it. Brother Huntington pointed out they're going to have to change their expectations. But I think the Joseph Smith translation of verse 44 helps us to understand that this spiritual salvation requires some responsibility. It requires some things. Notice what it, in, in the JST it says, No man can come unto me except he doeth the will of my Father who hath sent me. And this is the will of him who hath sent me, that ye receive the Son. Me is what he's saying. For the Father beareth record of him, and he who receiveth the testimony, and doeth the will of him who sent me, I will raise up in the resurrection of the just. This isn't easy doctrine. And you have to accept me as the literal Son of God, and do the will of the Father, which are the requirements and the teachings and the ordinances of the gospel of Jesus Christ. See, that's what separates a church of ethics from a restored gospel of ordinances and commandments that enables us to lay hold on eternal life. Or, or the notion that you're saved simply because of accepting Christ or as your personal Savior acknowledging or acknowledging Him, acknowledging him mm -hmm. without any works, without any efforts on your part. And, and, and see, then he, he goes right in, into this sermon. Look at, <clears throat> uh, we've, we've set that stage, and then he just keeps right on going, talking about what we would call the symbols of the atonement, the eating the flesh, the drinking the blood. And he's saying, except you do this, you have no life in you. No, notice again, too, Brent, uh, he's such a marvelous teacher. It's this repetition again, this theme. Uh, in verse 48, he states it again, I'm that bread of life. Your fathers, in verse 49, your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, they're dead. And, and you, you correlate that, uh, contrast that with what Kelly pointed out, this theme he's, he's uh, developing. And I'll raise you up. I'll he's raise you up. Give I'll give you the, life. The bigger picture. Yeah. The, everybody's blinded by what's immediately in front of them, caught up in the things of the world. He's trying to help them to see beyond. Yeah, what, go beyond. Uh, the, the, get the bigger picture. Get and, and lost at, in the thick of thin things immediately yeah. in front of us and see what's exactly. coming. And I was just going to add, and look where he's doing this. In verse 59, he's in the synagogue. I mean, he's in the setting where all the teachings are given. He's in the very place that they have honed in on as the center place of their worship. And now he's standing in that very place and declaring who he is he and is what he has to offer. Mm -hmm. of their worship. The very, everything that everything in that had building they've to talked that about. Very fulfillment. Yeah. Verse 60, many, therefore, as his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who yeah, can hear what, it? what makes it a hard saying? The demands. The demands, the responsibilities. Part, part, of, part of that, too, is the traditions of their fathers. Mm -hmm. They've got to let those go. 